श्रीराधा कृष्ण पादन ललिता श्री विशाखान्विता हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा
Jai 
Hare Krishna to all the devotees, Prabhu and Mataji. So we are now waiting for Padmanayana Prabhu to join with us. So please kindly be patient and waiting for him. And before, please introduce, I am Girid Haridas. I will be interpreting today for the Indonesian speaking devotees and also hosting this Zoom class for today. So later when the interpretation uh, program started, please kindly choose English if you are speaking English dan untuk penyembah yang berbahasa Indonesia mohon memilih bahasa Indonesia so that we can communicate nicely Hare Krishna, please kindly wait for Padmanayana Hare Krishna Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Oh, 
Hare Krishna, Padmanayana Prabhu. Okay. I will start. I will Hare start, Krishna. I will Hare start Krishna. the interpretation now. Yeah, you can hear me? Yes, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Dandavat Pranam. I will start it now. Hare Krishna, Dandavat Pranam, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna, Dandavat Pranam. <clears throat> yes, we will start now. <clears throat> Om Agyanatimiran Jnanjanasalakaya Chaksoran Militam Jena Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaham Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamini Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Sunyavadi Paschatya de Satarin Pancha Kalpataro Vyascha Vipasin Rudevacha Patita Nang Pavanibhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Mahavadanyaya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namne Gaurati Shekha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dinabandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Vapika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastate 
तप्त कांचन गौरंगे राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी निशभानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्रियाद्वैत गाधर शिवासादी गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे नारायण नमस्कृत नर चरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तपोजय धीरजे नस्तप्राएस्वभद्रेशु नि भागवत सेवया भगवतीम श्लोके भक्तिर्भवती Hare Krishna, dear devotees. So we are in Canto One, Chapter Five, where Narad instructs Sri Lokeshwaram on Simad Bhagavatam. So kindly remind us what we are discussing in our previous lesson before we start with our lesson. Three in unit two. What we are discussing in the last class? So we were discussing that uh, how uh, Vyasadev was um, um, was lost, um, was feeling despondent, and uh, appearance of Narada Muni. and uh, giving him the uh, reason why he is feeling the despondency and uh, uh, also um vasudev humbly submits that there is something and he as uh, asks narada muni to find out what's the problem mm-hmm. and narada muni says uh, that uh, glorification of the supreme personality was exclusively done in whatever work he has done previously so So he gives the instructions based on. Okay. So Ranga Maya Prasanna Prasanna Prabhu. Hare Krishna Prabhu. So hmm. we saw about uh, how uh, Vasudev is also condemn. Uh, sorry, uh, Narada Muni is also condemning the compromising attitude of uh, uh, Vasudev. Um, hmm. And, uh, tells him that um, the 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 glorification of the Vedas that has been in the Vedas that has been done. in terms of dharma artha kama moksha okay mm-hmm. uh, if uh, that is propagated then people will take that as a standard that mm-hmm. they need to follow uh, which which is not the right thing and therefore they should follow bhagavatam uh, yeah okay last uh, koti chandra prabhu uh, hari krishna uh, yes prabhu also he was asking uh, are you satisfied identifying yourself with the mind actually so because the things he created uh, was uh, given for the people who they are identifying themselves with the mind i mean was they were not identifying himself with the mind but the work he has done the things was given for the people who they are identifying with the mind so that's why we he wants to instruct like you know are also the krishna created the vacuum in his mind for the delivery of uh, uh, bhagavatam so yeah this all few points we discussed gopi ganga geeta mata ji hari krishna prabhu dadat pranam we also discussed about the conclusions of devotional services revealed by repeatedly practicing sadhana bhakti and uh, we should not get attracted by the books of, of the flowery languages and mm. uh, devotees are compared uh, with uh, with the hamsa uh, mm. they live okay. around the lotus so um similarly they are uh, deliberated to attain the lotus feet of the supreme lord so the lord lives in the heart of the devotee and devotee keeps the lord in their heart so they are not a separate one mm. that's a very good point madan man prabhu yeah there was a question also we discussed about why 
uh, even though Vasudev, Vasudev is an incarnation <laughs> of God, how come he was uh, uh, in this confusion? I mean, mm. how, can, how can he make mistakes? Yeah. Mm. Mm. That is the will of the Lord. Krishna and, wanted. Uh, yeah, so then the conclusion, the answer the given was discussed was uh, it's, uh, I mean, it's, it's Krishna's. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's Krishna's will mm. and, uh, through Vasudev. The Bhagavatam can appear. Through this incident, Lord Krishna ensured that Bhagavatam became manifest through Vasudev again. Okay, so. The general principle from Vyasadeva Bliss Satisfaction and discussed their relevance in our personal practice of Krishna consciousness and uh, explain the defect in the Vedic literatures and the compromising spirit of Srila Vyasadeva. So Srila Vyasadeva has uh, compromised. Narad Muni is telling that you have given these instructions in form of Puranas and Itihasas where people will think this is the path, this is the Dharma. They will not know the goal of Dharma is to render devotional service unto the personality of Godhead. And in the mood of Narad Muni, Srila Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur, he comments that those who are Pongu, Andha, those who are physically disabled people, they should become Brahmachari, they should become Sanyasi because they are not qualified to this karma, Marga. So in that way, people will totally misunderstand you. This is where you have compromised and not a, a kind of no story that Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur is talking. We can see in today's world, those people who are too much attached to karma, they when they see some renunciant, they do criticize them. They say, you people don't have anything to do. Now you have become sadhu, you are a burden for the world. You don't want to work. Now you are running away from your responsibility. Why don't you just perform karma? So same thing. That's what they is saying that you should not have done so. So then Vyasa father substantiates his point. And Srila Sridhar Swami is saying, Nanu, Jadi evam prabhriti margo Nindyate tarhi nibhritti margo sarva kriya tyage naivo parameshwara sukha swarupana bhute kinta jasa kathana kathane no apitatra. So, if somebody ask a question that Narad Muni you are condemning the path of bhoga, prabhritti marga. Huh? And uh, you are asking to follow the nibhritti marga, path of renunciation. There are two paths, prabhritti marga and nibhritti marga. If you condemn the path of enjoyment and you are stressing so much in the path of renunciation, well, mm, I can stop performing all these activities and uh, in that way I can also experience the happiness of the Supreme Lord being and I'll try to connect with the Supreme Lord. Why it is so important that one must hear about or glorify uh, the activity, the pastime of the personality of Godhead if this is the question, Sri Narad Muni, he responses. In fact, we find some people in this world today who take to the path of renunciation, follow the speculative process of knowledge, 
and they don't uh, sufficiently take to the path of glorification to the personality of Godhead. So for them, see Narad Muni responses. Vichakshano sharahati bedi tumbibhu ananta parasya nibritti tahashukham pravartamanasya gunairanatmana tato bhavandarsya chasti tumbibhu The Supreme Lord is unlimited. Only a very expert personality retired from the activities of material happiness deserves to understand this knowledge of spiritual values therefore those who are not so well situated due to material attachment should be shown the path shown the ways of transcendental realization by your goodness through descriptions of the transcendental activities of the Supreme Lord. Vichakshana asya arhati bedi tumbehu anta parish nebhritti tasukam. Those who are Vichakshana, wise people, they have already given up the desire for material happiness. They have become taken retirement from nebhritti tasukam, met from material happiness. And there are some people who, by the influence of the modes of material nature, they are still trying to enjoy. But for both of them, if you tata bhavan darsha chastitam vibhu, vibhum chastitam, the activities of the Supreme Lord should be described. Then both of them can find shelter in your explanation so that one's heart should be devoted to the desirable, uh, sorry, to describe the glory of the Supreme Lord. So here, the um, Narad Muni is saying that when one is either wise man who has given up the material, the enjoyment from the material happiness, or one who is still attached, but if they dedicate themselves to the activities of the personality of Godhead, that's how the heart will become purified. So in that way, it is very, very essential. So then uh, the next um, expert persons understand the blissful nature of the Supreme Lord. Hmm? So glorification of admirable pure devotion is starting from text number 17 through 19. In these three verses, Narad Muni is going to glorify the pure devotional service. That's why he's speaking. In the beginning, Siddhar Swami actually writes, even Tavat Kamya dharma de anartha hetu tam vihaya. So, those who are engaged in kamya karma. Kamya karma is the root cause of all anarthas, unwanted things. That's why one should give up those things and he should dedicate his life in. Sabanam and Kirtanam Prabhupada or devotional service under the personality of Godhead. That's why he is saying it is not uh, essential that everybody should dedicate themselves to the activities of their occupations, occupational engagements, varnasam duties. That's why Narad Muni says, Tyatva Sadharmam Charanam Bhujam Hare Bhajan Apakvat one who has forsaken his material occupations to engage in the devotional service of the Lord may sometimes fall down while in an immature stage. Yet, 
there is no danger of his being unsuccessful on the other hand a non devotee though fully engaged in occupational duties does not gain anything so there are people who are engaged in just nitya naimittika dharma hmm? but here the narad muni is saying what benefit they can gain by executing such kind of occupational duties oh one may say when somebody started bhagavad bhakti yoga the process of devotional service and because of bad association he is not able to reach with the perfection in the execution of krishna consciousness or even if somebody is doing the krishna conscious activities properly before he attained his perfection if he leaves his body what will happen to him it looks like he is kind of losing at least somebody who is engaged in such kind of nitya naimittika dharma he is performing some duty so why are you stopping him and these are recommended in the shastra that's why bhajan pakutta patit tato jadi tatra ko va bhadram there is no abhadra hmm? there is no danger because in bhagavad gita we have heard they will start from where they were left with means you know, the experience of bhakti yoga will bring him back again he will release there are some devotees i know who left the society just few days back one devotee told me when i just when i joined in 1994 that time i was serving in here in mayapur and there was a devotee who was uh, actually serving with me then something happened he left mayapur he went back to his home now he is staying there and just few days back one devotee told me he said prabhu this devotee you remember i said of course i know him he said now he is telling me can you find something for me in mayapur i want to go back Uh, so then he said he is feeling very lonely he is not very happy in his house and he is remembering all these experiences in my apurdham so this is the point that when a devotee he by some misfortune they stop the connection with such kind of practices and after some time their experience the realizations will bring them back and they will feel like starting this devotional service again so that is why there is no loss in executing krishna conscious activities therefore everybody should just simply focus on executing the devotional service under the personality of god head hmm? so here it is said it so happens sometimes that one surrenders himself on to the service of the lord by some temporary sentiment and in the long run due to so many other reasons he falls down from the path of service by undesirable association even though one falls down from the prescribed duties of devotional service he will never forget the lotus feet of the lord here we can see so many examples we are giving the examples of maharaj bharata chitraketu ajamil uh, ajamil in his when he was a young man he was performing his brahmanical activities perfectly and so happened that one time he went to the forest to collect samidha for the yagya and he came in contact with uh from undesirable events where he saw on the road a sudra was embracing a sudrani and that actually attracted ajamil's mind and ajamil afterwards he brought that you know prostitute and kept him and he forgot all his activities uh, but even though they fall down we can see at the end by lord's arrangement they are saved bharat maharaj also eh? even though they fall down chitraketu so similarly uh, those who are engaged in devotional service 
they should know this process of bhakti is indestructible. Anyone can be nicely situated in the execution of this bhakti yoga process. So here it is said, Slavishan Sakurti Thakur, he is making a very beautiful comment in this connection. Some people, they feel you devotees in Krishna consciousness uh, don't uh, perform these ritualistic ceremonies which are offered in the Vedas. Uh, so Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur is saying, no, 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 buddhi vedam jarendi jnanam karma sanginam jasit sarva karmani vidyan jitva samacharan iti sri gito punisavad uktena karma tyajanam nishiddham. In Bhagavad Gita it is said that one should not stop these agyans, those who are ignorant fellows, to perform these karmas. Then why you are kind of, you know, stay saying that karma is not necessary? Uh, yes, karma is necessary for chitta suddhi. Hmm? And, um, but those who are executing bhakti, bhakti to sata pravalyad anta pravalyad so, bhakti is so powerful that it does not require antakarana suddhi. Hmm? Uh, no, bhakti upadashtu vishayam. Therefore, those who are engaged in instructing about the science of devotional service, they are not supposed to instruct about karma marga. Even Krishna is speaking in Bhagavad Gita, Sarva Dharman Parityajya, Amame Kasm Sranam Raja. Even in Bhagavatam also it is said that just like why you can ask the question when this is also a path recommended in the Vedic literature, why you devotees who are preaching the cult of devotional service do not instruct people about following these Vedic rituals, Karma Marga. Uh, Swayam nishesham vidyan na bhaktam kya karmahi na rati rogina patyam banchit kopi visaktama. So here it is said that one who uh, knows the highest good, I mean to say, those who know that only good can be attained by being engaged in the divorce or service then how can they instruct someone to follow karma? Because the point is here, those who are engaged in karma, why they are engaged in karma? Even people, the, the brahmanas, who are helping their yajamanas to execute this karma, it is said that Bhagavad Bhakya Balan Nitya naimittika swadharma nishthaya api tyajanai vakkevalai hari bhakti rupa upadeshtra vya iti asana takta miti. Bhajana aramba dasayam api karmanu vritti nishiddha. In this verse, according to Sri Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur, that from the beginning of when somebody starts practicing devotional service, from the very beginning, they don't have to practice this karma. Just like, uh, just as an experienced physician, he does not recommend his patient to take food which is injurious to his health. Uh, even if the patient desires so, so the point is here when an expert physician does not give this medicine to the patient, sorry, doesn't give the food to the patient, even the patient desires it. Similarly, a bhakti yogi, one who instructs about the science of bhakti, he will never ever try to instruct someone on the path of karma because that is injurious to Krishna conscious health. So that is why here it is saying that uh, one should not instruct him like that. There's an is also saying, give up your occupational engagements 
and take full shelter of the lotus feet of Krishna. Therefore, Tashyaiva hetu prayate tako vidho nalabhyate jadham tamu paryadha talabhyate dukkha badanyata sukham kale na sarvatra gavira ramhasa. So here, uh, it is said, where is it? Why I'm not able to see this? Yeah. You can see this slide? Okay. Yes, bro. Yeah. Yes, bro. Can you read from the slide? Yeah. Uh, wise men, glorification of admirable pure devotion, 1.5.17 to 19. Wise men are not deluded by happiness in this and the next life, 1.5.18. Persons who are actually intelligent and philosophically inclined should endeavor only for that purposeful end, which is not obtainable even by wandering from the topmost planet, Brahmaloka, down to the lowest planet, Patala. As far as happiness derived from sense enjoyment is concerned, it can be obtained automatically in course of time. Just as in course of time, we obtain miseries, even though we do not desire them. Mm -hmm. Those who are learned in devotional service, they know that even if by performing this karma, one is successful and they are promoted to the Chandraloka planet, and they are given opportunity to have higher type of sense gratification. But he understands that even if I keep on traveling from Pataha Loka to Brahma Loka, this Bhakti Sukha is not available there. Na labhyate jad bhamatam pariyadha. Even if going, going up and down. Tal labhyate dukkha badanyata sukham kale na sarabhatra kamiradam hasha. Prabhupada also explained, and many times he also speaks the same thing. Ahara nidra bhaya maithanancha, samanya metat posmi nara, dharma hiti samadika vishesa, dharmana hina posuri samana. So this ahara nidra bhaya maithan, eating, sleeping, mating, and defending. These activities or the sukha, the happiness derived from these four principles is obtainable easily in any form of life, even if somebody uh, who is engaged in an animal body, they can also get this kind of you know, happiness. So that's why we should not desire for those kind of uh, happiness. And happiness and distresses are always available. Just like without seeking for happiness, happiness comes. Similarly, without seeking for distress also, they come to us. That's why those who are wise people, they don't give much emphasis into uh, all these things. Therefore, he says, Navayi jano jatu kathancha nabhrajit mukunda sebya nabadanga samsitim smaran mukundang ryupagu hanam puna vihatu michenna sograho jana. My dear Vyasa, even though a devotee of Lord Krishna sometimes falls down somehow or other, he certainly does not undergo material existence like others, fruity workers, etc. Because a person who has once released the taste of lotus feet of the Lord can do nothing but remember that ecstasy again and again. This is a very interesting point. Servant of Mukunda is never uh, returning to the cycle of birth and death. Why? Mukunda Sabya Anavadyanga Samsitim Smaran Mukundangri Pagu Hanampuna. This is the example I just gave just a few minutes before that this devotee who was in Mayapur and he was serving very nicely. Some other he left. Now he's remembering. <laughs> Even though 
you know, maybe uh, sometimes uh, devotees are not so much attached to the Mukunda, but at least they can uh, experience the happiness they were enjoying in the association of devotees. Um, in some karmic estimation, they may say, well, maybe he is not able to you know, get good food at home, or he is kind of missing this opulent life that his devotees are leading. Maybe that's why he's desiring to come back. Somebody may sarcastically make a comment like this, but I would say, for whatever reason may be, at least he's remembering the good association of the devotee, temple atmosphere, every day how you are attending temple program and all. So if a new fire devotee can you know, think like this, and it is going, is this kind of attraction to devotional experiences is uh, bringing him back to the devotional practice. And then what to speak of the devotees who are in a high class consciousness, who are very much attached to the lotus foot pit or the service of Mukunda, definitely he will not be able to give up. This is called Rasa Grahojana. This Rasa Graha has been defined by Srila Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur in a way where he is saying uh, hmm? Rasa Graha Jana. He is saying, right? You can see it, right? Hmm? Yeah, he is saying, uh, <laughs> she is giving the quotation from Padma Puran. Na karma bandhanam janma vishwanam chavidyate. Those who take up this Vaishnava path, they don't come back to the samsara. Why? Uh, Purva. Purba Bhyasat Eva Mukundangri Upaguhanam Manasa Parishangam Smaran Puna Tyaktum Na Ichet. Once who is engaged in the service of Mukunda, he will not be able to give up that opportunity. Uh, or it is said that. Um, Even if sometimes because of some misfortune we leave this practice of devotional service, then out from our experience when we return back at that time, actually uh, he is becoming prideless. That kind of experience, what he has gone through after giving up Krishna consciousness, then when he kind of, you know, equate with his experience in Krishna consciousness, makes him prideless. And he comes back to perform his sadhana. And this time, he is 100% surrender and he's saying that, now Mukunda, my life should be in the hand of Mukunda. Why? In this higher consciousness, here it's a rasa graha jana. Rasagraha means he experiences some sort of sweetness in the devotional service. And uh, somebody may say, well, a devotee in the beginning, how does he experience this kind of you know, happiness? So Rasagraha Jana, uh, he had said, when we perform this devotional activities, Nishtha, Ruchi, Asaktiyante, Rati Dasayam, Saksha, Devar, Rasa, Bhavet. So this experience of Rasa, this superior happiness takes place when one attains the stage of Rati, means Vava. That is coming after Nishtha, Ruchi and Asakti. But the point is, Bhajanasya prarambha dasa prarambha dine api prachannataya rasan aswa 
losangsatvam asti eva how you see when we start krishna consciousness devotional service as a new devotee in the beginning also we experience some sort of happiness the example has been given that when we start eating food automatically we feel satisfaction strength and our hunger is gone so in the similar fashion we see there are some devotees who start their krishna consciousness activities with the devotees their attachment to material world is automatically disappearing and when the attachment to the material world disappears they experience a higher sort of happiness in krishna consciousness krishna consciousness in the beginning time so in that way raso is experienced at the stage of sadhana practice in the beginning of the sadhana practice uh, that is why uh, shila prabhupad he is making the comment in his purport a devotee of the lord automatically becomes uninterested in the en enhancement of material existence because he is rasagraha or one who has tasted the sweetness of the lotus feet of lord krishna pure devotional service is so spiritually relishable that a devotee becomes automatically uninterested in material enjoyment bhakti parishanu bhava and virakti anyatra here he becomes automatically uninterested in material enjoyment that is the sign of perfection in progressive devotional service a pure devotee he continuously remembers the lord's lotus feet of the of lord sri krishna and does not forget him even for a moment not even in exchange for all the opulence of the three worlds <laughs> even if he is given with the opulence of the three world still he is not desirous to enjoy the worldly happiness so now in the next he is speaking uh, okay text number 20 right this is talking about the knowledge of your superior lord what happened okay idam hi visham bhagavani vetaro jata jagat sthana nirodham sambhava tadhi svayam ved bhavan tathapite pradesh matram bhavatah pradarshitam so here when nagmuni is speaking that you must glorify the personality of god at so who this personality of god had is idam hi vishwam bhagavan ivitara yato jagat sthana nirodha sambhava he is saying that my dear jasadev you know that there is only one supreme lord that everybody should glorify him and what is what is his identification his identification have been described here that from whom जतो जगत स्थान निरोध संभव सो फ्रॉम होम दिस कॉस्मिक कॉस्मोस बिकम्स मैनिफेस्ट एंड ही ही काइंड ऑफ यू नो मेंटेन्स इट एंड आल्सो ही इज कॉज ऑफ एनिहिलेशन मींस आफ्टर द एनिहिलेशन ही रिमेंस सो ही इज द बिगिनिंग ही इज इन इन द मिडिल ही इज देयर इन द मिडिल एंड आल्सो एट द एंड आफ्टर एनिहिलेशन only he remains you must speak describe about such lord who from whom this cosmos become manifest and also it rests in him and he also uh, after annihilation enters into him means he remains after annihilation uh, so this is why he is speaking that you must speak about him hmm? so that have been further described in prabhupas purport um, can somebody read from the slide for a pure Thank devotee you. for a pure devotee the conception of mukunda lord shri krishna is both personal and impersonal 
The impersonal cosmic situation is also Mukunda because it is the emanation of the energy of Mukunda. For example, a tree is a complete unit, whereas the leaves and the branches of the tree are emanated parts and parcels of the tree. The leaves and branches of the tree are also the tree, but the tree itself is neither the leaves nor the branches. The Vedic version that the whole cosmic creation is nothing but Brahman means that since everything is emanating from the Supreme Brahman, nothing is apart from him. Similarly, the part and parcel, hands and legs are called the body, but the body as the whole unit is neither the hands nor the legs. The Lord is the transcendental form of eternity, cognition and beauty and thus the creation of the energy of the Lord appears to be partially eternal, full of knowledge and beautiful also. Purport of 1.5.20. So here the philosophy has been explained that Idam hi Bhishtun Bhagavan. This cosmos is Bhagavan. Like some people say everything is God. Yes, how everything is God. You need to explain this philosophy very clearly that this cosmos is God, you are also God, your hand. Just like Prabhupada is giving the analogy, the leaves and branches of the tree are also the tree because it is connected with the tree and it can be understood in relationship with the tree. Sometimes when we see some opulence, maybe Sham Babu, he has a big establishment. When we go there, we actually see Sham Babu with his establishment. We don't separate it from him. Similarly, this is called Ati Desa. Ati Desa means it is an extension. It's an extensive understanding of the personality of Godhead. How the personality of Godhead can be perceived through his creation. That is the understanding, not that. That's what he's saying. Idam hi visham bhagavan ivetara jata jagat sthana nirodha sambhava. Because this jagat, this cosmos is coming from him, therefore it is non different from him. Or you can say, this is the extensive understanding, extended understanding about the personality of Godhead that he has extended himself in form of his energy, which is nothing but a cosmos. Just like Prabhupada giving, the analogy of the leaves and branches of the tree are also the tree. Uh, similarly, you have the kind of inner you know, body, uh, the legs, hands are called the body. But the body as the whole unit is neither the hand nor the legs. That's the thing, Bhagavan Ivetara, even though Bhagavan, the Supreme Lord, is this cosmos, or you can say this is also Bhagavan, this cosmos, but Ivetra, it is different, just like legs and hands are called body, but as a whole unit, they are not body, they are separate. Similarly, Lord is also separate from this cosmos. That is what, about whom you must glorify, you must describe about him, their personality of Godhead. So this is the knowledge of the worshipable Lord uh, being described here. Then in text number 21, he continues, Kamatmanatmanam aveham ogadrik parasyapam sa paramatmanapam phalatam sorry, kalam Ajam Prajatam Jagata Shivayata Mahanubhava Hidayo Diganyatam. So hmm. okay. So here the result of karma. Penance, jnana, vairagya, everything is coming. That is explained in text number 22. Okay, let us read the translation. I didn't read translation for this 21. Uh, your, your goodness has perfect vision. You yourself can know the supreme personality of Godhead because you are present as the plenary person of the Lord. 
Although you are birthless, you have appeared on this earth for the well-being of all people. Please therefore describe the transcendental pastimes of the Supreme Personality of God as Sri Krishna more vividly. Parasya Pumsa Paramatmana Kalam. Kalam means you are the plenary expansion uh, of the personality of Godhead. That's why Ajam Prajatam Jagata Sivayata. Actually, you have appeared to do good for all people. Those who are uh, trying to become the devotee of the Lord or those who are simply trying to enjoy this world, you have come to bring, to do well-being, for the well-being of all people. Therefore, you must glorify the transcendental activities of Sri Krishna for the directly mentioned. And idam hi pumsa tapasa sutasyava sristasya suktasya chabuddhi dattayo abhichutartho kavivhi nirupita jaduttama shoka gunam varnanam. So he is saying that there are different kind of executions that people accept like some people take the path of karma, some others, they perform some penances, some cultivate jnana, some cultivate vairagya, others take the path of mystic yoga. Some people, they perform some charity activities and uh, some others are also attached to dharma. So whatever one is trying to achieve by being engaged in such kind of activities, they, they can get their respective results just by being engaged in devotional service. That's why idam hi pumsas tapasa sutasya By tapasya, by the study of the Veda, sustasya suktasya, chabuddhidate, abhichyutartha kavibhinirupta. This is the a conclusion established by the wise people, Kavis. Eh? Therefore, you must describe the guna, the qualities of the personality of Godhead. Learned circles have positively concluded that the infallible pure purpose of the advancement of knowledge, namely austerity, study of the Vedas, sacrifice, chanting of hymns and charity, culminates in the transcendental descriptions of the Lord who is defined in choice poetry. So that means whatever uh, is recommended in the Veda, they're all ultimately meant to bring one to the stage of bhakti. So that means by the execution of bhakti, one can very easily attain the end result of studying Veda, cultivating Jnana, Vairagya, or mystic yoga, even performing the charity work, whatever. So then the next section, this set of verses starting with text number 23 and to 28, we have selected one open book question for you with reference to the life of Narada, during previous kalpa, explain the process of appearance of pure bhakti and its growth up to the stage of prema, and share your aspirations in view of the phenomenon described in 1523 to 28. Is question clear? You need further clarification on the question? Any doubt? on this question because I want you to uh, kind of understand this question because you have to write an essay on this. Yes, Vishal uh, Prabhu. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Uh, thank you so much for giving the class today again. Um, so Prabhu says with reference to, to that section, it's fine, it says, and share your aspirations. But when you say aspirations, could you just clarify it? Mm. in regards to aspirations. Very good, very nice point. I will explain to you, for example, how Narad Muni, like here you see, Narad Muni is telling that you must uh, describe the past times of the Supreme Lord and it is definitely going to benefit everyone. 
But somebody may ask, not, if Vyasadeva asks, Narayana, you are asking me to do this, is there any kind of an evidence that definitely it is going to benefit some people? Now Narayana is going to speak from his own personal experience how it has helped him. The study of Srimad Bhagavatam has helped him. I mean to say, when you see the life of Narada, he is describing how you are aspiring, what you are lacking actually in your practice of Krishna consciousness, what is stopping you to be in a proper frame of consciousness, mind, to practice this devotional service in such a way that definitely the appearance of your devotion will be there in your life. And also, you have to ensure that through your aspirations, this will grow onto the stage of prema. That is what I mean to say by your aspirations. Means what you desire to do through studying these sections in terms of applying the principles taught by Narada's personal life's example. How you are going to apply those principles in your execution of Krishna consciousness so that your pure bhakti will be developed and it will grow up to the stage of prema. What are your aspirations? How you would like to put yourself in that consciousness like Narada Muni had that consciousness or how Narada Muni had attained this pure bhakti? How did he get it? So what you actually you will do in your personal life experience? Is it clear? Yes, Prabhu, thank you so much. This is completely personal. So everybody has to write what they feel. Okay, so next 23 to 28. Uh, so first, he is going to describe about devotee's mercy is the cause of pure bhakti. Okay. Aham purati tavabe bhavam mune dasyas to kasyas chana vedavadinam niro pita balakae vajoginam susru sanam prabhushini vivikshatam. So he is saying that. For Prabhupada, during the rainy season, I was given the opportunity to solve these Bhakti Vedantas. Those who were uh, living together, uh, observing this Chatur Masya Brata. And what is my identification? Dasyastu. Uh, I was the son of a maid servant who was engaged in the service of the Bhakti Vedantas. And Nirupita uh, Balaka Eva Joginam, actually they were so kind that they engaged me in serving them. Even though I was a small child, but I got the opportunity to serve them personally. So that is the kind of my first uh, thing, Nagamun is speaking about himself. Even though he was not a very highly qualified person born to a bad servant, but he had the opportunity to serve the Bhakti Vedantas, the devotees of the Lord who were engaged in devotional service during four months of rainy season. I was engaged in their personal service. They will sometimes tell, like when you see Maybe, you know, your child, you, are, you have gone to your guru's ashram with your child, small child. Then Guru Mahal said, hey, baby, can you bring that pot or can you bring that book for me? Uh, so the baby is bringing and in that way he is getting some engagement and uh, then Guru Mahal will bless him. So this is how it started with Narad Muni also. That's how he is saying that devotee's mercy is the cause of pure bhakti how he was engaged in their personal service that helped him to come to the platform of pure bhakti, then he's further describing. Te maya, te maya peta khilacha palher bhake dante dhritakdana ke nuvartini 
चक्रु कृपं यद्यपि तुल्य दर्शन शुश्रूष मणे मुनयोलिनी here narad muni is speaking about the qualities he had as a small child you can see how narad muni became endowed with pure bhakti these are the qualities he is explaining by himself te mai apeta akhila chapale arhuke dante she is saying i was completely sense control adhrita kidanake anuvartini adhrita kidanake we have seen children normally they are very much attached to the toy but from very childhood narad muni was not so much uh, he was not having any uh, what do you say mm. Mm. toy with him and he is saying no alpa bhashini she would not speak more than required the small baby sometimes you have seen this qualities in some small babies uh, and achapala he was very calm and quiet he did not have restlessness like the babies so he was not restless he was um, very you know he was sense controlled and he was not attached to the toy and he would speak only as much as required he is not going to speak more than necessary so these are the qualities we can see in the narad muni he is speaking that he had when he was engaged in the service of personal service of the devotees although they were impartial by nature eh? chakru kripam jadyapi tulya darsana they are uh, tulya darsana means they are impartial they are equal to everyone still they so their mercy upon me how vedanta uh, uh, blessed me with their causeless mercy as far as i was concerned i was self controlled and i had no attachment for sports even though i was a boy in addition i was not naughty and i did not speak more than required so this is what what are your aspirations that what type of attachment you have for the games and all or how is your situation you have to kind of compare with nagmi then what are you going to do so that you are in the association of devotees and krishna consciousness movement and how you are aspiring to develop this pure bhakti if you follow the footsteps of narad muni definitely it is going to become manifest in your life uh, there are two types of mercy affected by some material qualities gunamai and affected without seeing material qualities you see this mercy have been defined here narad muni saying kripam chakru by seeing me my qualities they actually blessed me they were merciful to me in the common world those people who are uh, um, uh, giving mercy sometimes gunamai kripa is defined like this uh, that um, we we'll see some good qualities in someone then we kind of know bless them if we see they are not having the devoid of good qualities we see something bad in them then we don't give mercy to them but here it is saying nirguna means those who are tulya darsana they see everybody equally they don't bother so in that way when they offer their blessing to narad muni narad muni is also saying actually he said even though i did not have anything bad in me they first of all gave their blessing then with their blessing when i started practicing in my you know bhakti how he is practicing bhakti next verse is going to be described then that attracted more of their mercy 
these are the kind of aspirations how you want to project yourself in the service of some devotees who are becoming merciful to you and after you have received their mercy and you execute in your life then you can also receive further mercy from them this is how these are the aspirations you need to have what are you going to do you need to describe so this is what nagun is speaking and what happened in the next he is saying uchchale paan anumodit advijahi सक्रेत्स्नभुंजे तदपास्तबिलविश एवं प्रवृत्तस्य विशुद्धचेतस तद्धा तद्धर्म एवात्मरुचिहि प्रजायते हाउ ही कैन टू द प्लेटफॉर्म ऑफ रुचि इज बीइंग डिस्क्राइब्ड हियर इज सेइंग वंस ओनली बाय देयर परमिशन उच्चिष्ट लेपान अनुमोदित द्विजयि this boy he was engaged in their personal service sometimes after they have finished eating he will take their pot and he will bring it to wash uh, to clean the pot and um, he will, he could see uchchista lepa there is some remnants touching uh, in the bowl and then with their permission anumodita dvijay now that he just take it and start to eat it like we do we sometimes we serve more to guru maharaj but the guru maharaj can leave something for me or even if doesn't leave he will force to leave it <laughs> it's not like that anumodita dvijay by their permission i took remnants of their food and by so doing all my sins were at once eradicated this is the process of becoming free from the sin एक्सिक्यूटिंग the dharma evatma ruchi prajayate that means when you are in the good association of the bodies who are spiritually advanced and you try to come close to them in this way you associate with them automatically you develop the taste for the type of devotional service or ruchi they have in krishna consciousness hmm? then the next thing is said uh, Uh, here proper is speaking the pure devotion is infectious how it is infecting uh, someone uh, you can see uh, it's like a contagious disease uh, can somebody read from the slide pure devotion pure devotion uh, pure devotion is as much infectious uh, in, in a good sense as infectious diseases a pure devotee is cleared from all kinds of sins by the association of pure devotees all these obstacles are removed after the elimination of all sins or obstacles on the path of devotional service one can become attracted one can have steadiness one can have perfect taste one can have transcendental emotions and at last one can be situated on the plane of loving service of the lord all these stages develop by the association of pure devotees and that is the purport of this stanza 1.5.25 purport ruchi prajayate all these stages developed by the association of pure devotees and that is the purport of this stanza so then the next what happened when he says that by their association i also developed the ruchi in the execution of the transcendental activities what they were engaged in so now what happened the next is going to describe in text number 26 uh, the stage of asakti and bhava is coming is for the described in this verse in 26 and 27 further we going to describe 
Before we continue, Prem Kishore Prabhu, you have a question for us? Hare Krishna Prabhu. Uh, mm -hmm. The question is, uh, the in the paragraph it says that the pure association with the pure devotees will remove all the anarthas and purify the heart. Mm -hmm. So how do we, what are the qualities or how do we understand a pure devotee? How do you understand the pure devotee? Okay. That's why sometimes we try to eliminate all devotees in our society saying he is not pure, he is not pure, he is not pure, because you don't know who is pure and what is pure thing. <laughs> you see, definitely devotees like Pahupat and you know some advanced souls, you can see who are 100% engaged in the service of the Lord. They are equal to all. They don't have any concept of me and mine. And as you see, they kind of, you know, from the description of Uvala Samrita and Bhakti Samrita Sindhu, they are always engaged in the service of the Lord. Uh, so, and also you can say, definitely those who are in the level of Baba, they are definitely pure devotees, okay? But, now the point comes, okay, how can I find someone who is in the level of Baba all the time? And I am in a congregation to be practical uh, that we are in a city or in a temple. Not that all devotees are in the level of Baba or is that I am always getting the association of my Guru Maharaj. Uh, so it is not practical. So therefore, you have to create a pure devotee atmosphere in your congregation. Try to understand this. I, I, I said, you have to create a pure devotee atmosphere in your congregation. That means our practices are pure practice, like chanting, reading Shimad Bhagavatam, deity worship, okay, cleaning the temple, doing any service for the Lord. These are all pure practices. Okay, Savanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Pada, Savanam, all these activities are pure. But the problem is we bring in material impurities to our consciousness while engaged in such kind of services. For example, when you go to your congregation program, uh, while Bhagavatam class is going on, you can find still devotees are chit-chatting about their material life. Something has happened to them. Why are you thinking about all these things? As long as you are in, for example, you, are, you start uh, this, what do you say, Kirtan Mela. And devotees come together, they sit together to do some chanting. Somebody is in the enjoying spirit, he's making a show of his dance so that people will see what a nice dancer I am. Huh? Kirtan Mela is not for you to promote yourself to become an expert dancer, to promote yourself as an expert dancer. So the point is, one way you can create devotees, uh, pure devotee association is that the Sravanam Kirtanam program, Navadha Bhakti execution should not be mixed with any other aspirations, any other desires. Just you come together, do that. Because Lord wants it, Prabhupada wanted it, your Guru Mahath wants it, you just do this. Then that association is pure association. For example, sometimes you go to the temple, you sit, for example, this Kirtan Mala time, devotees are singing, you just sit there for a few minutes, you feel like you are floating in ecstasy. That is the power of pure devotion, pure association. So in that way, one way you can choose a group of devotees, if not at least one or two, and you can spend some time discussing pure Krishna consciousness without any interior motives. Okay, that can be pure devotee association and reading from Prabhupada's books, also association with pure devotees. And if you know some other devotees who does not have any material contamination in terms of name, fame, address, and aspiration in this material world, they can also be in the category of pure devotee. And their practices, what they say, they follow Shastra, uh, they, you know, yeah, what, what Shastra says, they follow and they preach the same also, Achar Prachar. So in that way, you can kind of, you know, uh, make an estimate, I would say like that. Okay, so here, the next, it is said, the stage of Asakti and Bhava is explained in this verse 20, 26. 
तत्रन्वहम कृष्ण कथा प्रगायताम अनुग्रहेणा शृणवम मनोहर ता सद्धया मेनु पदम विसुन्नत प्रिय सवशंगम मां भवद्रुचि ओ व्यासदेव इन दैट एसोसिएशन एंड बाय द मर्सी ऑफ दोस ग्रेट वेदांतिस्ट आई कुड हियर देम डिस्क्राइब द अट्रैक्टिव एक्टिविटीज ऑफ लॉर्ड कृष्ण एंड दस listening attentively my taste for hearing of the personality of god had increased at every step ha huh? shila so, prabhupad he writes can somebody read this is the stage of bhava or asakti asakti and bhava hmm? by hearing the narration by hearing. of the past tense of the lord one hmm. contacts directly the personality of god it and hmm. as explained before when one hears about the personality of god it all accumulated sins of the mundane nature are cleared from within narad muni has just explained this by his personal experience the whole idea is that simply by hearing about the lord's past times one can become one of the associates of the lord do you see a quote of 1526 in this paragraph prabhupada is not mentioning about that you should hear from of course is in hearing from pure devotee but see simply by hearing the whole idea is that simply by hearing about the lord's past times one can become one of the associates of the lord you choose one devotee with whom you are not going to discuss anything but krishna katha maybe spending good amount of time in studying bhagavatam or chaitanya charitamrita maybe you know bhakti santosh sindhu so if you are just simply trying to understand the signs that have been explained in that section and then if you have some doubts then discuss with a devotee who is much more experienced than both of you that is sufficient enough as a sadhak or all the stage of our krishna consciousness suman hare krishna prabhu so mm-hmm. we see in narad muni's case that he has already developed this qualities so quality which quality uh narad muni is saying right he was self control he mm. was not having an attraction for sports mm. right from his childhood mm. but uh, that means he already had a background of devotion therefore he could develop those qualities right so what is what is your question you no know, i am asking uh, so in this stage it is uh, like he is saying getting the association of bhakti vedantas and then advancing this is already from a higher stage right this is not nothing but nothing from the higher stage wherever war one may be if they start associating with the devotees and commit themselves to this process of shravanam and kirtanam program their purification like before we said now bhakti does not need any background we have seen in natural devotion we studied uh, you know basishta explains to king dilipa that in the province of mayuradhyaja all these people when they were dressed in vaishnava attire with tilaka and beads they look like coming from vaikuntha so anyone and there the explanation have been given in the month of magh anybody can go and take bath in ganga to take spiritual benefit similarly there is no bar for who can or who cannot practice devotion anyone who practices pure devotional service their growth is very quick purification is very very quick the problem is we don't want purification means when you are getting purified automatically you are getting disinterested in, in from this world people are you know speaking something you are not bothered about it. or sometimes you are also thinking why it is people are not respecting me huh? why you are want respect my dear sir so you have to kind of you know, be this is the point you need to be more in contact with cultivating this pure devotion activities that's it you don't worry about that you don't have that quality nag muni had already from the childhood that quality will become manifest sarvai gunastatra samasate sura harava bhaktasya kuta matna manorathe nasri davata vai why are you traveling so fast with sitting on the chariot of mind huh? जस्य 
Sarvai Gunais Tatra Samasa Teshwara. All the good qualities of the demigods become automatically manifest in such a devotee. So you just practice the Gosana service. Siddha Prabhu. Uh, Hare Krishna Prabhu. Many times we see um, innocent people, they try to, they hear from this kind of uh, professional reciters. Um, they are innocent, uh, in they, but they want to still hear Krishna Kada and they hear. So would that hearing has any, any effect on them? Like would it uplift or because, because it's spoken by a professional reciter, but maybe not a pure devotee. It doesn't no, have any professional, professional Hearing Bhagavatam from professional reciter is not going to help. That's very clear. No, professional recital, that, that is not recommended. Thank you. In our society. Okay. See, having attained Ruchi test, now became steadily fixed in the Lord. That is explained in the next verse. Uh, Tasmin stada labdha ruchir mahamate priya savasya phil skhalita matir mama askhalita matir mama jaya hamettat sadasat sumayaya pasye mai brahmani kalpitam pare. So here he is saying that Tasmin tada uh, labdha ruchir mahamate. Priyas Askhalita Mati Nama. My Askhalita Mati. Askhalita Mati means he was, his attention was fixed all the time. And as a result of which, Jasyaham Etat Sat Asat So Mayaya Pashe Mai. Actually, what happens? So Maya means So Abhidhyaya Kalpitam. That means when we consider this body as a self or out of ignorance or attachment to the material objects, we lose the attention in Krishna consciousness. Then we are able to see only our relationship with this material world, not with the personality of Godhead. That's why I think, but Narguni is saying, when I attend the Ruchi, here Ruchi means, Actually, he came to the platform of nearing the Bhava platform. At that time, the Abhidya Kalpita Asat Asat, he was not experiencing. The gross and subtle matters of this material world was out of touch, or you can out of say, you can say out of his experience. That's how he was able to see Pasya Mai Brahmani Kalpitam Parehe. Uh, so I could see that me in my true position am transcendental to the effects of this material world. Just like the Supreme Lord is transcendental to the material energies. That means a devotee as a sadhaka, when he commits into the process of this Navada Bhakti process, pure practice of pure devotional service, a stage will come where he will automatically feel destruction, I mean, automatically feel detached from the material associations. That is what is happening. See, that one is speaking. Now I can see in my personal life, what am I doing? If by, like we are just few minutes ago, we quoted from Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhakti Parisanu Bhava Virakti Anyatra. When I am perform executive body personal service, my attachment for material things are gradually reducing. Is it so happening? If it is not happening, that means there is something wrong in me. Because I am doing pure practice. For example, just now we are studying this Bhagavatam verse. We are not talking anything mundane. We don't have, we are, we are not thinking of anything else. So this is a pure practice. That means after reading this Bhagavatam, even though for some time this impression remains in my mind, that's also a good sign. But if it does not, if it does not remain even for a single moment, then that's not a good sign, actually. Many times we have seen when we read, afterwards we feel you know, contented with that mood for some time. Uh, that's a good thing, actually. Uh, that's why Narvan is saying that 
when he got the ruti, he became steady, fixed in the Lord. Uh, can somebody read from the slide? Hare Krishna. Having attained ruchi, taste, Narada became steadily fixed in the Lord. Since the cross and the subtle bodies are emanations from the personality of Godhead, the knowledge of light permits one to engage both of them in the service of the Lord. The gross body should be engaged in acts of rendering service to the Lord, as in bringing water, cleansing the temple, or making obeisances, etc. The path of archana, or worshipping the Lord in the temple, involves engaging one's gross body in the service of the Lord. Similarly, the subtle mind should be engaged in hearing the transcendental pastimes of the Lord, thinking about them, chanting his name, etc. All such activities are transcendental. None of the gross or subtle senses should otherwise be engaged. Such realization of transcendental activities is made possible by many, many years of apprenticeship in the devotional service. But simple attraction of love for the personality of Godhead as it was developed in Narada Muni by hearing is highly effective. Mm. Hearing is highly effective. So here next it is said that in this four months of Chaturmasya, as he was dedicatedly hearing in the association of this Bhakti Vedanta, Sankritya Manam Munivir Mahatmavi Bhakti Prabhuttatma Rajasthamopaha. Such kind of execution helps one become totally freed from the effect of mood of Raja and Tama. How it is happening, the stage of Prema become manifest in Narada Muni that somebody can read, then we will explain something here. Some other devotee? If by the grace of the Lord and the great soul devotees, of the Lord, a living being becomes fortunate enough to associate with the adulterated devotees of the Lord and thus gets a chance to hear the unadulterated glories of the Lord. Certainly, the dormant instinct of the devotional service is at once awakened and the flow of devotional service takes place like the flow of a river. As the river flows on till she reaches the sea, Similarly, pure devotional service flows by the association of pure devotees till it reaches the ultimate goal, namely transcendental love of God. The flow of devotional service is so potent that any onlooker also becomes liberated from the influence of the modes of passion and ignorance. 1.5.28. Here, Here, it has been described about the association of Someone who is totally free from material contamination. That's why Prabhupada is speaking that associate with the unadulterated devotee gets a chance to hear the unadulterated glories of the Lord. When a devotee's motives are perfectly pure, that time he will be able to only describe the unadulterated glories of the Lord. Means he doesn't have any ulterior motive. Why we, for example, if we ask ourselves, why am I engaged in Krishna consciousness? Oh, I want to be happy. <laughs> why you want to be happy? Oh, I am suffering. You know, why you are suffering? <laughs> Do you think this, you know? So, study of Srimad Bhagavatam, chanting holy name of the Lord, you want to use it to become free from the suffering? You don't know. It can give you love of God at any are thinking why I am suffering, I should apply it for removing my suffering, condition of life. No. So what is happening here, you see, Prabhupada is saying, the flow of devotional service is so potent that any onlooker also becomes liberated. In this connection, the association of somebody who is actually in the liberated platform has been very, very highly effective. 
I wanted to project one portion from natural devotion to help you understand how actually this is happening. That somebody who is not uh, very pure and he is just uh, becoming like an onlooker and he becomes liberated. How it is becoming effective on a conditioned soul who is still, you know, uh, in contamination, in the stage of contamination. Uh, he is under the influence of personal ignorance. You just read this. Uh, somebody can read this. On the course, liberated from the influence of the modes of passion and ignorance. Sometimes it is found that a person actually attach it, attached to material enjoyment or salvation has the good fortune to associate with pure devotees while they are engaged in chanting the holy name of the Lord. By the good grace of the Lord, one may also co cooperate and join in the chanting at that time. At that time, simply by the association of such pure devotees, the moon like rays from their hearts reflect on him and by the influence of the pure devotees he may show some likeness of attachment caused by inquisitiveness but this is very flickering and if by the manifestation of such shadow attachment one feels the disappearance of all material pangs then it is called para attachment Nectar devotion chapter 18 you see what is happening sometimes we go to the holy places to the temple there you come across some devotees who are engaged in chanting or reading Srimad Bhagavatam or doing something you know devotional activities when such a person who is having uh, who is having who is having attachment for material enjoyment he goes to you no know, ashram, and he finds a devotee engaged in such kind of you know, chanting or reading you know, Bhagavatam. Then, <clears throat> at that time, simply by the association of such pure devotee, means he develops some desire that oh, I want to just sit with him, I want to listen to him, I also want to kind of you know, spend some time with him. Then, what happens by spending some time because he has become inquisitive, he will kind of you know, develop some sort of likeliness to that practice and by the influence of the devotee, his, this shadow attachment will kind of become manifest. But again, this shadow attachment for Krishna conscious activities, it will be flickering because he has got material enjoyment. The desire for material enjoyment is still there. But if he continues to associate with such a devotee more and more then gradually the disappearance of all material pains will take place and at that time his attachment will be para attachment he will also become free from the influence of the modes of passion and ignorance even goodness also so that is where we, again we are saying that when you are kind of employing yourself in the execution of krishna consciousness you should be totally free from any ulterior motives, but just simply commit yourself to the practice of Sabhanam Kirtan program. In fact, somebody may ask this question, Prabhu, what you are saying is totally impossible. Definitely, when we are in this body, we are grahasthas, we have got children, we have got you know, family members to take care, we have got social responsibility, so many obligations are there. How can I become just like, you know, such a Kevala Bhakta? It's not practical. It so happened actually, Krishna, he told Arjuna, he said, Arjuna, you cannot become a Kevala Bhakta and you, you, you are not supposed to be on Sakama platform either. If Arjuna says, my dear Lord, what do you want me to do? No, you become Niskama Karma Jnana Mishra Pradhani Bhuta Bhakta. So in that way, that we're going to discuss that what actually the practice we should undertake uh, so that we can be the practitioners of Niskama, Karma, Jnana, Mr. Padani, Bhuta, Bhakta. Mm, that have been described in the next. So we will just skip a few slides. See, 
कर्म मिश्र भक्ति इज सुपीरियर टू भक्ति मिश्र ज्ञान that have been described here in this section text number 35 and 36 i have to come to look at this not much time i will not read all the verses just a few points this is very important section let us read from this slide then we will take some practical guidelines for our execution of krishna consciousness can somebody read the general and popular notion is that by discharging fruitive work in terms of the direction of the scriptures one becomes perfectly able to acquire transcendental knowledge for spiritual realization bhakti yoga is considered by some to be another form of karma but factually bhakti yoga is ever both karma and gyana bhakti yoga is independent of gyana gyana or karma on the other hand gyana and karma are dependent on bhakti yoga the lord does not want his sons the living beings to suffer the threefold miseries of life he desires that all of them come to him and live with him but going back to godhead means that one must purify himself from material infections when work is performed therefore to satisfy the lord the performer becomes gradually purified from the material affection this purification means attainment of spiritual knowledge therefore knowledge is dependent on karma or work done on behalf of the lord other knowledge being devoid of bhakti yoga or satisfaction of the lord cannot lead one back to the kingdom of god which means that it cannot even offer salvation as already explained in connection with the stanza beginning beginning naiskarmam api achita bhava varjitam Hmm. One five twelve. Yeah. Thank so you. here the kind of you know science of bhakti is clearly defined that how one should execute this bhakti yoga process while in this material world when he has still some obligation for karma so that he can be you know uh, on the path of bhakti and uh, he will progress. So here, karma mishra bhakti is superior to bhakti mishra gyan. See, even bhakti mishra na karma na bhakti mishra gyan na moksha sadhan bhavati iti uttam. When one is executing bhakti mishra karma, then he will come to the platform of bhakti mishra gyan, and from there. he will actually attain moksha okay liberation but the point is if he is cultivating this bhakti mishra karma that is bhakti part is less and karma part is more that will lead to again bhakti part is less gyana part is more that means that is going to lead to impersonal approach okay and that may highest help bring him to the point of becoming free from the miseries of this world but this is not the case our point is bhak karma mishra bhakti here karma mishra bhakti means bhakti is mixed with karma that means bhakti is predominant okay as i said as a grahastha we cannot totally give up karma or gyana at the same time i cannot become a kevala bhakti then what should be the way of executing bhakti so that i know i am growing gradually from where i am to the perfectional stage while executing all these activities even the kind of you know even though we have to perform some material duties in this world what is the mood a devotee need to cultivate krishna is speaking na sarva karma ne prasada kurbana mat vipasya mat prasadat avapnoti shashvata padam abhyayam he is saying sarva karma ne prasada a devotee is not only engaged in vaidika karma he is performing vaidika laukika also here it is said that भक्तस्तु भगवत स्वामी कत्पे नैव आत्मानं जानंत 
स्वकर्तव्यम वैदिक लौकिक दैहिक कर्म स्व प्रभु प्रवर्तम प्रत्यंत सर्वेव तस्मर्पयती महान वेद See the difference between we engaged in some material activities, which is also called as karma, and a person who is engaged in some ritualistic activities that are offered in the Veda. What is the difference? Somebody may ask, Prabhu, you are saying you are a devotee of Krishna, but you still keep going to work in a computer company. You are a software engineer. At least I am a Vedic Brahmano. I am engaged in doing this, uh, you know, Nitya Homo. This what you say? Mm, uh, um, anyway, there are some kind of you no know, rituals they perform. I am engaged in performing all the uh, Vedic activities. I am better than you. Uh, then you are going to a kind of company and working there. Who is better? My position is better. It, it looks like you know you have nothing to say. But try to understand. This man is engaged in some Vedic ritualistic activities. He knows that without. Uh, let me read it out. That will be better for you. Uh, he knows that. Okay, karma no hi, karma no hi, karma bhayphalya abhavartham bhaydika meva karmaar payanti. He knows that all these Vedika karmas. If I am not offering to the Lord, then I will not get the result. That's why he is doing this Vedika karma and offering to the Lord so that he is getting the result. But in case of a devotee, even though he is engaged in some loukik or even dahika karma, karoti jatsa sakalam parasmai, kaena bacha manasein driyarba budhyat pana pano sutas swabhava. You see how many ways we are engaged in activities. Kaena with our body we do some activity. With our words we also kind of do some activity. Manasa in your mind you are thinking you are doing something. Eh? Eh? Manasa kaena baacha manasa indriyerba by your senses. Okay. And buddhi buddhiat mana ba anusuta swabhava by your nature. You are committed to perform some dahika karma also. So when you say you are engaged in such kind of activities, what should be the proper mood that you are different from a person who is performing dahika karma and surrendering to the Lord? The difference is, you as a devotee, you know, Bhagavat Swami Katpe Naiva Atmanam Jananta. You know your Lord and Master is Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He is your Lord and Master. First point, okay. And then with that conception, whatever activities you are doing, Mat Prabhu Pravartya Manam Pratyanta Sarva Mevo Tasmin Samarpanti. That means whatever you are doing, you are doing as an offering to the Him to to. To to see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to become a perfect Vaishnava, that is why Krishna said, "Sarva karma ne pishada kurbana mad vyapasra." Mad vyapasra means in all endeavors, he is totally dependent on Him. So in that way, even though it looks like you know he has to perform some karma, which is mixed with bhakti, but he is in a better situation. That's Mohan Veda because he has accepted Him as a Servant of the Supreme Lord, and Lord is His master, and whatever He is doing, that is under the direction of the Supreme Lord. He is engaged. Ato eva atra jat asnasi iti just like He is speaking. Jat kroshi jat asnasi jat juhoshi dasi jat. When you are eating, you tell me what do you think as a Vaishnava, Vaishnavi? You think. I am honoring this Mahaprasadam to survive on this body, so that I can serve my Lord again. You are not thinking that I am eating this Krishna conscious Prasadam. I am eating the Prasadam. I want to become a fat man. I want to look very beautiful. I want to, you know, decorate my body with nice things. It's not like that. You are not just trying to lead a healthy life. Rather, you want to lead a healthy life for Krishna conscious activities. There is a difference. 
Like we give the kind of you know, example that a lady, she decorates herself not to attract other people, but to attract her husband. She wants to present herself very nicely before her husband. So this is what it is, the kind of devotee is thinking, I want to do everything, whatever I am doing at the end, the goal is to serve the Lord. So that's a, there is a big difference. Uh, that is what has been defined in the next verse, Kurvana Jatra Karmani Bhagavad Sikhya Sakri. By Bhagavad Siksha, uh, whatever Lord has said, Jat Kroshi Dasna Shi Dijadi Siksha, Sabda Sarva Dharman Parite, Dijadi Siksha of the Lord. Gnanti Guna Namani Krishna Shyanam Smaranti Chara. So in the association of devotees, he is engaged in glorifying the Lord. If somebody is available to hear, then he starts speaking. If nobody is there, then he himself is reading and releasing. Or somebody is here to talk to him, then he will try to listen from them. This is what it is. Gnanti Guna Namani Krishna Shyanam Smaranti Chara. In this way, he cultivates he tried to meditate on the Supreme Personality of God, Her Krishna. Uh, uh, Karma Mr. Bhakti, Super Bhakti Mr. Gyan. An expert devotee of the Lord can mold his life in such a way that while performing all kinds of duties, either for this or the next life, he can constantly remember the Lord's name, fame, qualities, etc. The order of the Lord is distinctly there is uh, there in the Bhagavad Gita. That's of course you don't that is the point, that is the verse. One should work only for the Lord in all spheres of life, in every sphere of life, and like the Lord should be situated as the Proprietor. You accept Lord is the proprietor, not Prabhu. He has actually asked me to do all these activities. That's why I am doing. Otherwise, you have got no business in doing all these activities. The next, uh, apart from such basic duties, even in our ordinary dealings, for example, in our household affairs or in our business or profession, we must consider that the result of all activities must be given over to the Supreme Enjoyer Lord Krishna. In the Bhagavad Gita, the Lord has declared himself to be the supreme enjoyer of everything. That means we accept he is the enjoyer, not you. A pure devotee remember this constantly and in doing so. So you are always remembering this. So, and in doing so, he repeats the transcendental name, fame, and qualities of the Lord, which means that he is constantly in touch with the Lord. The Lord is identical with his name, fame, etc. And therefore, to be constantly associating with his name, fame, etc. means actually to associate with the Lord. That means you, even if you are going to a business place, you are going to market or going to the kind of you know, your job, you are thinking, oh, when can I go back to home so that I can spend some time with my family member to read or to chant, to do arati of the Lord. And I have to kind of, you know, okay, now you are in the market. You are thinking, oh, I'm getting late. Now it is time for me to put my Lord, my deity to sleep, to rest. So you are kind of you not know, thinking in your mind like that. Not necessarily a karmi who is just performing this Agnishtama Jagya. And he is thinking that now it is time for me to go back and put my Lord into sleep. He's not thinking like that. Whereas you are thinking, eh? oh, this is the time for Rajbu. Now I have to go make an offering. Mataji is thinking, it's getting late. So this is how your position is superior to those who are engaged in just some Vedic rituals. Huh? Next, in this section, which I explained, Bhakti Mishra Karma leads to Bhakti Mishra Jnana leads to Moksha, maximum liberation. Whereas Karma Mishra Bhakti leads to Jnana Mishra Bhakti leads to Rati, to the Lord along with liberation. This is called Santa Bhakti. So if you are at least performing Karma Mishra Bhakti, we are putting Bhakti as the priority. And as you have been taught by your Guru, Srila Prabhupada is speaking, if you continue that practice, then definitely you have a bright future in Krishna consciousness. Any question or comment? Dear devotees, Hari Bol.
हरे कृष्ण प्रभु जी द गुणमयी गुणमयी मर्सी सो गुणमयी मर्सी इट मीन्स that uh, a devotee sees some qualities and no no no, no, no de- see, see, see. this is gunamai kripa is like outside people right when they give mercy they see something good on the basis of their qualities then they give if they don't see there is some kind of you know you can say the distinction is there if somebody you are working in a company this is the best example and your company sees you are performing well by seeing some good quality they give you some bonus and next year you don't perform they are not going to give you bonus <laughs> right that is guna mai kripa but nirguna kripa is that is only sadhus do they don't see anything whether you have some quality or not they are out of their not uh, you know good will good wishes they give you mercy kripa that sir nagun is saying So, yeah, so my question was then the in case of gunamai mercy isn't i mean we always know that bhakti is the cause of bhakti so but in case of gunamai gunamai mercy isn't isn't the root cause is the qualities that the person has that uh, the i mean the devotee pass on the mercy no that is what is happening that this gunamai kripa is not helping the you know the word the person to transcend this material world he is stuck here but nirguna kripa is helping the performer to kind of you know transcend this world this is the difference in that context you try to understand different between guna mai kripa and nirguna kripa. don't don't bring bring in this guna mai kripa into the realm of devotion and that is discussed in terms of how it is keeping somebody bound in this material world He is not getting free from the entanglement of birth, death, old age, and disease. That is Guru Mai Kripa. Sansari na. Prem Kishor Prabhu. Hari Krishna Prabhu. Uh, question is uh, how karma yuk karma mishra bhakti is better than gnana mishra bhakti? Isn't that gnana leads to uh, realization of Krishna and then leads us to Serve in Krishna consciousness. Jnana. It is the it is the jnana which will lead us to the uh, knowledge of karma and karma mishra bhakti. Mm-hmm. So isn't that jnana mishra bhakti which leads to karma mishra bhakti or jnana? Mm-hmm. No 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 no. This jnana mishra bhakti. Here, there, there is a diff, there are a lot of paths in that. What is happening is, unless this Jnana Mishra Bhakta comes in contact with a Vaishnava, they will be easily kind of you know uh, taken away with a desire to merge with the Brahman or with the body of the Brahman. Like for example. here today we are discussing how the living entities and the supreme lord are transcendental to the material modes in their pure state a kind of you know mayavadi he will say when the jiva living entity transcend this material qualities he becomes one with the lord that is very dangerous that is why but in karma mishra bhakti that is why we explain karma mishra bhakti means niskama karma gyana mishra pradhani bhuta bhakti that is the understanding a devotee understands his situation like you are in the material world you are not giving up karma your obligation to the society to family and friends but a gyani they may sometimes prematurely renounce the activities nahi kastit khanam api jatu tishtatya karma krit you cannot just remain inactive as long as you continue to live in this world we have to perform some activity but a gyani at certain stage they stop performing activities because they feel this is binding me why i should perform these activities that's why they are lower in lower position we know by following yukta vairagya principle this same like here we did not read 
the example have been given uh, the same food item like for example by taking milk you have developed some um, disease bowel disorders and by taking the another milk product therapeutically that is called yogurt you can cure the disease which is caused by milk so similarly this activity which is has to stay in this world that can also liberate us when we perform in the platform this is karma this karma means you do for the lord but a jnani he is not doing the for the lord he is trying to just remain the activity prematurely that's why that is in fear thank you prabhu thank you sir Uh, Prabhu ji, my my uh, question is regarding the Nirguna Kripa. So um, just to understand that, uh, like um, I have a situation like in my family itself. My sister, she um, has a little boy, a little son, and uh, she since the before my my nephew was born she's been serving uh, different like all the gurus uh, shri prabhupada's disciples or any traveling preacher who would come she has converted her home into like an ashram they would come and stay at her home and do bhagavad katha and all pandal program and all so my nephew he is like he had a difficult birth and he is special a special child so he needs lots of attention and all so he doesn't um listen to class he doesn't chant he doesn't sing but he loves the association of the of the sanyasis and all the traveling preachers so and then um like um sometimes like devote other devotees when they come to the program they kind of put doubt in my sister's mind that they okay um this child is a little bit disturbing the class or this child is uh not behaving or something like that uh so my sister gets a little bit um like nervous and and feels like okay am i doing the right thing so but when you explain the nirguna uh, uh kripa like i i see like um i see uh, just to give an example like he the child will not uh talk to the sanyasi but as soon as he sees sanyasi coming home he will go and run and grab him and hug him so um i see that uh, the maharajas will come and and give him mercy and they will come and talk in a different level with him not not uh, uh like philosophy so um what my question is um like uh, is 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 there any offense being done in in the part of my sister or the child or uh, should she continue in that kind of service continue serving and eventually the child will get blessed like what's your thought about that prabhu how old is the child is he's right now he's 10 okay you see the condition so when the child was born from this uh, sanskar like garbhadana sanskar and other sanskar they perform yes and uh, his her guru maharaj named him krishna kripa okay so what is happening is this boy has got some kind of previous sanskar that's why he is in that mood but i would say don't worry about that part he is at least not kind of being offensive and sometimes the children are like that you understand that they out naughty behave here they will child children are children you cannot expect them to behave like a mature person and uh, i would say he is in good association but what is that type to me i don't know much about it i mean it's a boy but i feel worry about it actually it will just take is a question this boy is in good association and they how said that they are not receiving some sadhu i i have nothing to comment here any other point any other question or comment No, okay. Wow, you've been so nice, huh? So today we mostly spend time in discussing the points. These are the objectives today. Hmm. 
understanding explain the glories of the devotion especially in these three verses 17 to 19 explain the way of appearance of the devotion and its truth Il Prema in the life of Narad Muni. We establish Karma Mishra Bhakti is better to Bhakti Mishra Dhyana. Okay. Hare Krishna. Read this quote for today. Can read. Shri Naradaji advised Vyasadev to describe the glories of the Lord just to do good to all eight classes of men, both good and bad. Srimad Bhagavatam is therefore not meant for any particular class of men or sect. It is for the sincere soul who actually wants his own welfare and peace of mind. 1540 purport. So this Bhagavatam is meant for all. There is no particular reading assignment except just to read the entire chapter for next class. So we are expecting Hare you to Krishna. write only one open book assignment for unit Hare two. Krishna. I have given the question to you today. You can start working on your open book assignment from tomorrow onwards. So is there yes. three, three questions on open book assignment? Only one question? Only one question for this unit. Okay. This question what I gave, not in the handbook. I want you to kind of you know, meditate on this life of Narad Muni and how he developed the test for pure devotional service in the association of the devotees, and then how through their association he came to the point of achieving bhava and to the level of prema. And whatever we have discussed today in the next chapter, we are going to discuss the next two stages, prematha darsanam and hare madhur bhava. Means now he is kind of ready, he has achieved the prema. And next he is going to see darsan of the Lord, the darsan of the Lord, and then he will experience the sweetness of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Thank that you. Is what message. is the deadline to submit open book question assignment? Can you ask Sudama Gopa Prabhu? Okay, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Don't delay. I would say if you ask me, I am saying you can submit it by the start of next unit. Thank mm -hmm. you. Prabhu. Thank you. We have got two more lessons to complete unit two. And then, oh, somebody saying, I don't understand what the question is. Who is this? Um, I don't understand what the question is. Shanti. You didn't see the question I presented on the slide? I, I must have missed it. I can't see. I don't understand. I was clicking all the questions and I didn't. I'm, I'm, I'm not understanding it directly. Sorry, Peru. Okay. Um, so what I'll do is we will send the slide, all of you. Then as you go through the slide, you can see the question in the slide. Open book question. Thank you. Did, I, did anyone take a you know, picture of that slide today? Yes, Prabhu, I have taken I can put it. Then you can send it in the group immediately so that everybody will have this right now. And I think you have received this slide for the last two lessons, lesson number one and two. Am I yes, correct? Prabhu. Yes, yes, Prabhu. Okay. Vishal Prabhu? Uh, Prabhu, I want to ask you, just for unit two, is there an exam? If there's only one OBA, is there an exam as well? Because we've got two more. Close, close book exam is there, yes. Close book exam is there. Could you tell us when that is? Because I've got another exam for another course soon. Okay, that will be like you see, we have got two more lessons. We will finish this unit two into Saturday. Sorry, yeah, today Saturday in me for me. Yes. Saturday, yes. then the third Saturday will be your test. Okay, probably. That is right. Jan okay. 23rd. Uh, Jan 23rd. Okay. She is okay, okay. thank you. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Hey Krishna, hey Krishna, Krishna, hey, hey.
हरे राम हरे राम राम